Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm taking a quick look at Infill in Orca Slicer. So let's go ahead and get started. This video is brought to you by PCBWay, an awesome prototyping service. I want to thank them for their sponsorship for this video. As you get into 3D printing, you'll notice that some of the print parameters you use, and those are those over here on the left hand side, have a significant impact on how quickly a model will print, how quickly it slices, and really, depending on these settings, you can have a huge difference. Right now, I have this little cube I generated. Let's center that on the bed. And I've turned it on the infill pattern geoid. If I hit slice plate, you'll notice this has taken a couple of minutes to actually slice. And once it does slice, let's take a look at the time. So the time of this print now is six hours and 33 minutes. That's pretty significant. Now let's go over here and change this to grid. Slice it again. We'll notice it slices much quicker, and it also takes about two hours less to print. So the type of infill you select and the infill density, again, has a significant impact on the speed at which a model will print, as well as the model strength. Now, if we look in Orca Slicer, there's probably about 15 to 20 different patterns you can select from. And as we've seen, just comparing grid and geoid, there's a significant difference. Now on grid, I'm at three hours and 53 minutes. If I go up to concentric and hit that, this is three hours and 56 minutes. So again, you're seeing that there is a slight difference, not as much as geoid, but still a difference. Now, I think if we go over and check lightning, so let's look down for lightning. That should probably be pretty quick. So that's two hours and 16 minutes. Now, if we look at what that infill looks like, it's very little infill. I mean, basically it's enough infill to do the top of the cube and it's not really providing any internal strength. In fact, if we look down here in the model, let me move this over a little bit, you'll notice that there's hardly any infill whatsoever. And the infill is just coming out from the sides. And as we move up, it's basically to hold the roof on. So again, that's gonna have a big difference and mean a big change in the strength of our model. So we can look, again, a bunch of different options here. And some of these are fairly complicated. The more complicated the infill pattern, the longer it's gonna take to slice, the longer to print. Now this one, again, looks like it's about the same as the grid pattern. And this is Archimedes, let's see, Chords, Archimedean chords. Look at basically almost circles or spirals as infill. Now, the question is how does this affect strength? And how do we know without doing some testing? Well, it turns out I periodically look at the pull requests for Orca Slicer just to see what's coming up. And I happen to notice down here there was an update to the wiki. When I go over to the wiki, I noticed one of the updates had to do with the infill. And what's pretty awesome now is the, the wiki actually lists what the X, Y, and Z strength estimated of an infill pattern is, the material usage, as well as the print time. So you can look through here and try to select the infill pattern with the highest XYZ strength while at the same time minimizing print time and minimizing material usage. 
This episode of Minimal 3DP is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is currently celebrating their 11th anniversary. And with this anniversary, they have numerous deals and coupons that are available. Now, what's awesome about PCBWay? It's the fact that you can create an instant quote via their web interface. You can upload a Gerber file, and then they'll go ahead and fabricate your design. Also, as part of their service, they have real-time fabrication tracking. This allows you to monitor every step of the process, including shipping and delivery dates. I'd like to thank PCBWay for their sponsorship and then also congratulate them on 11 years of business. Begin with, but I use Additive Cubic and all this graph is doing is reaffirming that for me, that's a good choice. I'm getting normal to high XYZ strength, minimal material usage, and the print time is fairly low. And we can go over and look at Orca Slicer. So we've just done this Archimedean Chords, and that's three hours, 53 minutes. We go over here and take a look at Adaptive Cubic, slice that. That's at three hours, 20 minutes. So we're gaining almost thir over 30 minutes quicker. And we're getting some pretty good strength here. Now looking at the infill pattern, you'll see it sort of switches up as it's printing. That's the adaptive part of the adaptive cubic. And again, I like this infill pattern because it's quicker and gives me extra strength. Now, just to compare this, this is saying this is going to use 65 meters of filament. Let's go over here and select, let's select grid. And you can see that's using, taking more time and using a heck of a lot more filament. So that's using about 13 meters more just by changing the infill pattern. So one of the things you need to look at, and I would recommend, is opening up the Orca Slicer Wiki and taking a look at these various infills and try to identify the infill pattern that's going to work best for you. And looking through this, there, there are some awesome ones. Cross hatch looks good. Some of the honeycombs look good. And again, for me, which my default is adaptive cubic, that looks like that's giving me the properties I really want. Now I'm going to scroll down here and just point out that if you're really interested in this, they have detailed descriptions of each different infill pattern. And let's click on adaptive cubic. And you can see you can read about it. And also, we can see if you scroll to the very bottom of the chart here, you can download the Excel sheet that was used to calculate how each of these filaments or each of these infills ranked. So this is a great new tool for you to look at and try to use to determine what's the best infill pattern for your model. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post below. Feel free to share or subscribe. Anything you do will help the channel grow. Again, I appreciate your time. Hope you have a great day.